we going to win? What's our resource? Is it the political party? Is it William Wilberforce? Is it Nelson Mandela? All those things are made and happen through us. And this is what I'm interested in, is how we can pull together. But in order to pull together, we have to look at our strengths and weaknesses. And that's what I want to do. Just to remind you, if you don't believe me, think of the trade union movement. How did that happen? Think of the vote. Think of the abolition of slavery. Think of apartheid. And I will refer to apartheid a couple of times because I'm South African. Any other, anybody else here South African? Hello, hello. So we have a lot in common. But think of apartheid, and I want to refer to apartheid. When my parents left South Africa, they were political prisoners, they said it was, they left because they had no hope. It was impossible to change. Now that's not true. The fact is it was possible to change and a movement developed in South Africa and the characteristics of the movement that developed in South Africa are also the characteristics of a movement here. Think about it. What did you have in South Africa? You had people taking pro, doing individual things, perhaps to a small extent. My parents tried to treat their servants nicely. Small thing, or, or you had, you had the, 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 in, in a small sense, in this country, the, the uh, economic boycott. What we would do is not buy oranges from our van, buy oranges from our Small things like that. Also you had, in South Africa less, but in this country, you had enormous lobbying of parliament and, and, and trying to get the MPs. As, this, as our climate movement has an aspect to that, it's run by our climate chaos, really, more or less. But the others help put it together. The, that side is part of our movement. Another thing in South Africa, especially in the later days, you had strikes. Strikes are fantastically important and workplaces are underplayed. And this is why I'm going to go into the links with the trade union movements a little bit later. But in, in what happened in Egypt, Egypt movement was hardly there, we didn't know about it, but the, the workplaces were a very important part. The other thing is you have massive, massive protests in the streets. You had that in the later days in South Africa. We haven't really had it about climate as yet. And actually, our movement is quite demoralized in many respects. I'm going to go through that. But so the point is that a movement, how do you pull those different forces together? In our Derby climate group, we have people who are against the people who climb up the chimneys and sacrifice themselves and hang themselves up in the chimneys for a week. But that direct action is part of our movement, as is going to the MPs, as part of the movement. How do we pull it together? One of the first things we have to do to pull it together is to start talking about the movement. Because quite often people are so busy in their own localities thinking that what they're doing, let's say stopping Tesco's being developed in Belpa, is the end of the world. It's not. It's just a type, it's a sliver of it. And how do we interrelate it? So that's my first point. The second point is I said a movement, but actually let's look at the movement. There's not one movement, there's two movements at least. You've got one which has been described by. Uh, from Hawkins, uh, Hawkins, he talked about the largest movement in the world, and he's talking about the environmental movement, and let, let's represent it like that, I don't know if you can see that, no. that's not, okay, that's green, right? Red. <laughs> red. Okay, yes, red shines more, <laughs> so he talks about, but, but he also says it is fantastically fragmented and inward and bound up in terms of its own lifestyles, changing the world, doing it through little things. If somebody talked about the yogurt, uh, the, the, the Blue Peter theory of changing the world. Wash a yogurt pot and you'll save a glacier. So there's, there's that dimension. I'm not trying to deride and we stand on the shoulders of the environmentalists because they've raised the issues enormously. But nevertheless, ooh, the present, uh, thank you. Um, but nevertheless, there are weaknesses in the movement. Then there's another movement which has got its own weaknesses, but actually it's a very large movement. The trade union movement, if you like. And the, the strength, the, the weakness of the trade union movement is being clobbered. And people are demoralized, it's fractured, it's got also, but nevertheless, there are still people organizing in workplaces in a systematic way. And one of the things about their strengths is that they organize together. They don't do it, they, they, the tradition of collective action is so, so important. And we're building a movement, that tradition of collective action has to really happen. 
but there is an enormous gap between those two. I remember going to the, uh, standing in the steps of the town council outside Derby, I started talking and I was introduced to some people from anti pax demonstration, introduced some people from climate. You know what the first thing they did? They looked for my sandals, see whether I was wearing sandals. The second thing is they turned off. Because the, because the trade union movement, that group of trade unionists, were so concerned about their own struggle, they weren't interested and they weren't able to relate. And that, I know that, and this is a real problem, this is what we tried to do in the, in the, in the, in the shift campaign or in the alliance. Talk about the gap between the trade unionists and people who are suffering from their jobs, who are looking, looking for work, who are looking for money, worrying about their children, worrying about their families. Climate has slipped off the bottom of the agenda. In the exact same way as it slipped off the agenda of the national politicians. <coughs> and that is something that we're really trying to focus on in the shift campaign. What we're trying to do is just take, instead of talking about climate, not that climate shouldn't be talking about, and if there's any opportunity to talk about it, do. If you can get 40 people in, in, in Brent to hear about climate in the Arctic, do it. But nevertheless, you can't always do that. Let's find other ways of talking to people, not slipping it in subvertically, but showing the relationship between jobs and climate and activity, and the, the, uh, I'm sorry, you've heard Charles and other people talk about that. So what we're trying to do is we're looking at that overlap, and we're trying to make less of an overlap. Yeah? And that's what our campaign is about. Another th critical thing about us, and we've been arguing this, is everybody talks about starting from below, and it, it's building from below. But actually, most of the national organizations are not doing that. And we think we have to take stock and see what our strengths are. Incidentally, we had a meeting like this in Derby, 90 people, four weeks ago. There were 70, there were 87 people like this in the meeting at Leeds three weeks ago. There are people who are hungry to make those bridges and to start making this. It makes it come alive when you start interrelating it as opposed to being in your own silos. But what we're trying to do is we're saying that what you need is everywhere, this could be footprints if you like, everywhere we need groups. But those groups shouldn't just be around climate, they shouldn't just be around jobs, they should be interrelating and perhaps more about jobs and money in your pockets than about climate, because we're trying to get that. Once you start having groups, and the group, the, the group in Sheffield, the group in Derby, the group in, 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 in Leeds, to some extent, they, they are making the breakthroughs because they're widening their agendas. The groups which are just talking about, let's share ideas on low carbon things, are to a certain extent, Atrophied, they're, they're dying away. I don't know, they've been counting, you don't actually count, they're dying away. You have to have differences, disagreements, and find ways of working with people from different backgrounds if you order to have an active group. The challenge is to see where you can agree, where you disagree, and don't always go to the, uh, you know, don't always argue and argue where you disagree. And some things you stop bringing to the table for a simple thing to do. You know, it's, I, I'm sorry if anybody, I'll give you an example, it's a bad example maybe. You know, people used to say, what you have to do is everybody has to be a vegan, that will change the thing. Somebody comes along to a meeting like this, they stop having those arguments. Some arguments you stop having, and other arguments you start learning how to develop and work together. And that's what we're trying to do. But having that in itself is not enough, because we're trying to move really fast and learn from one another. So the first thing we have to do is to get a network between those people. So we've got to learn from one another. We've got to learn from Derby, and Derby's got to learn from Camden, and so on. The second thing is we have to start looking at how do we coordinate, how do we pull together. And that's, if you like, there. I don't believe in a great big central machinery and a great big political machinery because that actually doesn't pull in the energies and strengths. But we do need to see how we can start putting together. And I'm just going to finish a couple of words in politics because I've got a time Ah, that's one. I'll just have a 10 second rest and then. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay I've got three minutes. One of the 